Hello friends, welcome to Desi Plaza. My name is Khushbu Rawley. Today we have with us Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. This firm has been providing law services for over 20 years now within America to different clients. They have very efficient staff who can speak multiple languages like Hindi, English, Spanish, Telugu, Kannada, Marathi, Gujarati, etc. They have core values of being practical, prompt, and professional. So friends, let's welcome Mr. Rahul Reddy. Rahul ji, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kishwa. First of all, we would like to know about your background, like your academics, your studies, since when are you in US, and how did you end up in this field of immigration services? I've been practicing immigration law from 22 years. Uh, my firm has been established, Redeem and Newman PC has established in 1997, which is exactly 20 years ago. I did my law in India, I'm a lawyer in India too, but as soon as I complete my law, I moved to USA and became a lawyer here in USA in 1995, which is 22 years ago. Since then, I've been exclusively practicing immigration law. Um, I, right now, we have a different partners in our office. We are 12 lawyers law firm. We have a support team of about 50 people in addition to the uh, 12 lawyers that we have. We practice exclusively immigration law and mostly concentrating on H-1Bs, labor certification, I-140, adjustment of status, and some L-1 visas. Um, but our focus has been only immigration since our inception in 1997. That's um, so awesome. Thank you for letting us know that. So what kind of uh, services does your firm provide to different business holders and business companies over here? We do, we, uh, we normally uh, take a lot of clients in the IT industry. Most of them are Indians, it happens to be. And uh, they, we file H-1B cases, we file labor cases, we file I-140s. And uh, as you know that the immigration in general, uh, the clients are more Indian. The reason why the clients are more Indian is that unlike other countries, the time taken for Indians to get the green card is much longer than compared to the other countries. So if a person is from Pakistan, it only takes one year to get the green card. But if it is an Indian, it takes 12 years, unfortunately. And so in the pipeline of the immigration, it so happens that more Indians are there. Uh, so our clients are mostly Indians that, uh, that are struggling to get the green card and getting to the H-1Bs. And that's 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 all we provide. So, uh, like for our audience, like in layman terms, what is the process of uh, getting uh, like citizenship and green card over here? Like, would you like to explain? Yeah, on typically that? people come here on a student visa directly, or they will come here on a H-1B visa from the companies, and they try to get to the green card. Once they come here on a student visa, you are allowed to stay, uh, continue studying, and then after your uh, education is over, you will be given a permit called Employment Authorization Document, also called OPT, Optional Practical Training. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, a practical training, you will be allowed to work for one year. And after that one year period, if your graduation has been in a science, technology, engineering and mathematics, also called as STEM degrees, then you will get an additional 24 months period of employment authorization also called as stem extension so you have a period of three years that's 36 months to work on the employment authorization in the interim period the individual will try to get an h1b because after the three-year period if they don't get any sponsorship or if they don't get into the lottery either they have to go back to the school or they have to get an H-1B. I mean, that's the, that's the target that they do. So we do the H-1B uh, case for them. And once they do the H-1B, the H-1B is allowed only for three years, will be extended for three more years. The total period of the H-1B is only six years. If a person wants to stay in this country beyond the six year period of time, he should apply the green card application, which is called a perm labor. That's a typical route for the, not most of the Indians. And that green card process is taking a longer time. Um, back in old days, it was taking less time, but it's taking a longer time for the green card process. So once you file a green card application, the six year period of H-1B can be extended beyond the six year period. Um, uh, if uh, once a labor certification has been filed, I-140, and once the date becomes current, what is date? I will explain you a little bit later on that. 
but that's the entire process called labor certification, I-140, and green card application. Mm -hmm. Once we get the green card uh, adjustment of status file, gets the green card, the individual is pretty much can do anything what a citizen can except voting rights. And once the guy gets a green card, it takes about five years for them to get the citizenship. Correct. And that, then that's when they can vote. That's right. Once <laughs> you get the citizen, you can vote. Yes. Correct. So thank you so much for providing that information in terms of how students can come here and what, what's the process for them to go finally achieve the uh, citizenship. Mm -hmm. But let's say there are some businesses who want to come and invest over here and uh, uh, get their foot in uh, American uh, business industry. What would you suggest to them and how does your firm help them? In USA, unlike most of the countries, to establish a company and do a business, it's very easy. In most of the countries, the process is very difficult. But in USA, really, you can go to a website and fill out the information and form a company. And the, and the company can do any business in the United States unless it's prohibited. Um, uh, they can start a consulting company, they can invest in a motel, they can invest in different items. The company can do anything legally they can do. So mm -hmm. uh, we do help some of the companies in investing into the United mm -hmm. States. But our focus, as I was been telling, is mostly only immigration part. We do speak, we do have some uh, CPAs and lawyers that work exclusively on the formation of the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but we guide the individuals how to form a company if they are coming from foreign country and investing into this country. Okay, okay, sounds good. So uh, uh, you spoke uh, uh, all these uh, information about that EAD and how right. the process and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the latest uh, talk, uh, topic about uh, and buzz about this uh, changes that Trump government has imposed mm -hmm. in America recently. So what uh, kind of impacts would this process in general have, the immigration process in general have? Uh, would you like to talk about that? Yeah, as we know that the new administration got into effect on January 20th of 2017. Uh, this administration came into power discussing, uh, came on the theory of anti-immigration. That is their platform. That's how they win the elections. So they, they are implementing the anti-immigration policies right now to an extent. Uh, though Trump administration initially said it's going to be more about illegal immigrants, they're also focusing on legal immigration too. Um, as we already know, uh, as of yesterday now, we have some uh, restrictions on some Muslim countries. Uh, also, they have dropped, they have also put some restrictions on legal immigration too. For example, for the people who were having a stamping of H-1B and they want to extend their H-1B, previously they were allowed to go and drop their passport and the information in a drop box and they would get their visa extended uh, within two or three days uh, without even seeing yes. a council officer. Mm -hmm. Now um, Trump said, no, Trump administration has banned those things every time you want to get a visa extended, you have to present yourself in, the, in front of the consulate and then you have to answer all the questions and maybe you will be allowed to come in or maybe you won't be allowed to come in. So that provision has been taken off uh, as mm -hmm. of yesterday. Um, and there's also about that EAD extension program mm -hmm. which was granted to the uh, spouses, um, right? The right, that's called that. H4 EAD. As I was describing to you, Kushbu, that um, once the individual starts on a pathway to the green card, when they have their I-140 approved, their spouses who are on H-4 visa will be allowed to work uh, for a period of time for which they are in the United States. That's called H-4 EAD. That provision came about one and a half year ago. Um, it was through a regulation process done by the Obama administration. There is a lot of fear at this point of time that that particular H-4 EAD will be taken off. But I don't think so that this administration is focusing on H-4 EAD at this point of time. There is no indication to us that they are going to take it off. These rumors are flying a lot, but it doesn't. The reason why I want to explain to you is that there are about 150,000 people who have employment authorization on H-4 EAD at this point of time. However, there is something called DACA, mm -hmm. where there are 900,000 people here in the United States, they are undocumentedly present in this country and they have an employment authorization. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So the total period of um, uh, the, the total number of people who are in employment authorization in Dhaka is nine hundred thousand. So when Obama, uh, when Trump administration, when Trump was in the election process, he said he's going to eliminate the Dhaka completely. Wow. That and means that, that all these nine hundred thousand people who have employment authorization, their employment authorization will be cancelled by one single stroke of signature. And wow. also, he could convert it because when you are applying for a DACA employment authorization document, you are indicating that the person is undocumentedly present in this country. You're signing a document which they did. Oh. So if Trump wants to act on that, he could have just said that your employment authorization cancel and then hereby you are getting the deportation order because you signed a document saying you are undocumentedly present here. Mm -hmm. So he could have done that. He is not doing it right now. Okay. So um, it, it, at this point of time he is not doing it. So coming back to the H4 EAD, I think so now. that he would rather go on undocumented people who are 900,000 than compared to the 150,000 people who are documentedly uh, here paying the taxes and abiding by all the rules, Correct. I don't think so he's going to cancel the H4 EAD at this point of time. Just yet. He, 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 he okay, would we rather can go on the... safe just yet. Um, yeah, I don't think terms. so he would do it. Uh, you can never tell what can be done, but at this point of time, uh, there is no clear 900, indication. 900,000 is a big number. To That's right, 900,000 is it gets cancelled, it's... Um, well, having a policy in a day is one thing, signing a bill is one thing, but then managing again so many people, their statuses and all That's that right. is completely separate. I mean, but there, I don't know how, what there, kind of insight do you have in terms of if ever that De happens. Definitely this administration is going to focus and is going to put a lot of resources on the immigration enforcement as compared to the previous governments. Now, mm -hmm. if you have seen the uh, deportation things that occurred in the preceding 10-15 uh, years, uh, starting from Bush era to right now, uh, we used to call Obama the deportation king, though uh, <laughs> Trump says that he's very lenient, uh, we call him as a deportation king. Uh, mm -hmm. He used to deport one million people every year um, who are undocumentedly present here. Um, now this administration wants So they had DACA or no DACA? Uh, I'm sorry? One million who were deported every year under uh, Obama's uh, administration, did they sign that DACA thing? No. Oh, no. wow. The, uh, Wonder they how they find these people? They, 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 there is a criteria at the time of Obama administration. Mm -hmm. The criteria was that if they have any small crimes or any crimes oh. they have done, if they have found them to be illegal, if they come across to them to be illegal, mm -hmm. Um, those are the kind of priorities that they had if they are trying to enter undocumentarily, crossing the borders. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the most of the people who will get deported so automatically. Yeah. So basically Obama was focusing on truly like uh, undocumented and illegal uh, guys. But he was uh, quite in support of the working class who came, in which uh, majority of which are um, apparently Indians. Mm -hmm. And uh, that rule of allowing their spouses or the That's dependent right. uh, spouse to mm -hmm. be able to work, even that was kind of nice, which, uh, well, as you said, it might just stay for a while. Uh, but, but anyways, how, what's your take on um, this thing that he's banning uh, seven people from seven countries mm -hmm. for almost like next 90 days, so they're under high scrutiny when right. they come back. So, mm -hmm. and how is it being planned? What would they do if they're uh, coming back and they're on airport? At this point of time, what they said was that we are going to ban the refugees from that country. That is the executive order that has been signed. They're mm -hmm. not banning the people from that country. They're just banning only the refugees. Oh, oh I what thought refugees refugee? for like 120 days and others, uh, I don't know the details, but others for like 90 days under high scrutiny right. or something? Yeah, the, the, the 90 days travel restriction is there okay. with those countries. Mm -hmm. If you recall that, um, we used to have these travel uh, restrictions with Cuba until 2016 we had a, a travel restrictions to Cuba. Mm -hmm. What does that mean is that if any individual wants to travel to any of those restricted countries on the executive order, you need to get the permission of the State Department. Okay. North Korea and, uh, and uh, Cuba used to be in that list before, now they, they added all these countries. Cuba is no longer in that list. They have to have signed document from their country right. you have to, to get, enter here. You have to get the State Department permission oh. to go into Cuba. That was the story. Now, 
It's the same story with these seven countries and uh, for this 90 days that if you want to travel to any of these countries. The reason why he cited was that most of these terrorists are coming from these countries. That's the reason he cited for the travel restrictions. Uh, this is only at this point of time, 90 days. It might extend for a long period of time. Okay, but within 90 days, if they do have their appropriate documentation from state, they can still enter, right? So, if they are outside the country, since they travel before the executive order is there, they are they can be allowed to come in. They can be allowed to come in. They mm -hmm. might be restricted on it, but it's better that they have all documentation that they have. Com they are completely legal in this country. They'll be scrutinized every time they come. Uh, when they when they come here, they'll be scrutinized very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. If they are planning to travel after the executive order, though, then they need to consult, they need to make sure that they get the permission of the state before they travel. If they're already outside the country, they're coming in, they will be screened very much into mm -hmm. whether or not they'll be allowed because they, no refugees are allowed from that country. Mm -hmm. So based on that particular item uh, that refugees are not allowed, they will consider everybody coming into this country as an refugee. Oh, oh <coughs> and, that's uh, the... Because of that, the restriction will be very high to come into this country. Wow, that's uh, cool. And this is, uh, as of now, we know for 90 days, but then who knows what will happen after 90 days and, or 120 days of uh, this uh, rule already in place. Mm -hmm. So friends, uh, we are still in talks with uh, Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. We shall return after a short break. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome back to Desi Plaza with your host Kushbu Rawley. We are uh, in talks with Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. So Mr. Reddy, as you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that uh, you, uh, you know, were here, are here since like 24 years now. Right. So we would like to know how was the immigration process back then and how has it changed uh, in so many years under different governments and all? Oh, back in those days, uh, I came here on a H-4 visa as a dependent. Mm -hmm. My wife uh, came here on H1, so I am on H4 at that point of time. And it took about one and a half year for us once we started the process to get the green card in those back in those mm -hmm. days. It was, uh, we used to think, oh yeah, it's taking a longer time, that is one and a half year. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays for the people yes. that are getting the green card, it is taking about 10 plus years for them to get the green card. Exactly. That's a time that is taking And then it's up. all about dates, getting current that, and they're just waiting. Yeah, and waiting and waiting and waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I heard that uh, some of the old people back in 70s and 80s, the employer will just catch the hand of the employee and takes him to the immigration office and tells the immigration officer, I want green card for this guy. And they used to get the green card in those days. I wish those days come back. <laughs> uh, well, well, I all Indians to, would I, wish I that. I want to tell you something <laughs> more interesting right now, or let's say not so uh, distasteful for you, mm -hmm. is for those people who are filing the green card right now under the mm -hmm. employment-based category EB2, mm -hmm. it's going to take 80 years for them to get the green card. Employment-based category? That is right. EB2 category will take 80 Why years. Why so long? 80 years is like a lifetime. Well, for a lot of people, uh, <laughs> if they wait, they will get it. Uh, if they die, well, uh, obviously uh, Next that's Next word, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Why? 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 The reason is that, that employment based is restricted to 140,000 green cards every year. Out of the total 1 million green card, only 14% is reserved for the employment based green card. Mm -hmm. And in that particular category of the green card process of the employment, there is a restriction that no country can get more than 7% when the 140,000 is getting filled out. Mm -hmm. So 7% of 140,000 is approximately around 10,000 green cards every year will oh. go to Indians. Got it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the H-1B, there is no reservation that a single country can get only 7%. It's open. Anybody who's eligible will get the H-1B. Mm -hmm. So there are total 65,000 regular quota, there is 20,000 master's quota, and there are some exempt employees uh, that don't count. So total about 100,000 H-1Bs are mm -hmm. granted every year. Mm -hmm. Out of that, about 60% goes to Indians. Mm -hmm. So that's 60,000, is right? So 60,000 people will should have taken six years to get the green card for each year. I mean, each mm -hmm. year, 60,000. But that doesn't work that way. When it comes to the employment green cards, the wife and the husband 
both are counted. In other words, when I got the green card, I got the green card through my wife because her employer applied, both wife and husband has been counted towards the 140 or 10,000 to the Indians. So practically towards only 5,000 families every year from India are getting the green card right now. If there are 60,000 H-1Bs coming into this country from India every year, which is the statistics according to the government, only 5,000 are getting, it is going to take 12 years. That means that 12 years, 12 years, every, every time you do that, and then minus a lot of people are going to die, when it goes to about 60, 70 years, a lot of people are going to die. That's the reason we came up with a figure of 80 years. Oh, assuming, that, every assume, year assuming that medical improvements and all those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, but yeah, every year, uh, again, 60,000 will add up. That's but right. the, from the prior year, they are not yet settled numbers. Right. So we have a huge queue, which might just keep on growing. Right. Well, this is actually quite an issue with all of us already. Right. But uh, how I'll do you I'll expect? Tell, I'll tell you, in 2007, the priority date was current. That means that it was 2007. Within that year itself, right, things it were taken care of. Yes. Mm -hmm. In 2017, we are like 10 years afterwards, the priority date is 2008. Gosh, it's so, so slow. So in 10 years, yes. it's moved only one year. If based on that, it's going to go 100 plus years, expecting that some other people are going to die, we came up with a figure of 82 years. So under Obama's administration, mm -hmm. did something happen to this process in terms of allowing more than 5,000 families no, green card? Nothing so it has been same ever since. It's been same from 1990. Okay. Even though they know that right it's a now. huge backlog. Right. And there uh, were attempts made in the Bush administration to change the process to allow more people to get the green card. Uh, the Senate did not pass at that point of time any bill to allow more green cards to get the, for the employment based green cards. In the Obama administration, the Senate passed the bill, but it was blocked by the House, which is the House of the Congress that blocked it out. So in the Obama administration, they couldn't pass it. Uh, now it doesn't look like, like they're going to look anyway pass. with the Trump administration. Uh, so <coughs> it, it is misery so for the people. Exactly. To so we have a lot of people who are legally working here That's on all right. the nice jobs. They're really mm -hmm. putting hard work in all their jobs, and then they're just waiting, and they might just have to wait for long time uh, eight years. so are there any lobbying or anything being done to resolve this issue the, at the time of bush, admi bush administration and also obama administration a lot of lobbying has been done towards it and the um, lobbying is Indians done by the well particularly microsoft uh, mm -hmm. uh, facebook google yes. apple all, uh, oracle all these companies did uh, they did present themselves and saying that this is wrong way of doing the business mm -hmm. for us we need talented people to be allowed to come into this country and stay in this okay. country. Uh, but the Congress is dead from past 15 years. They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And now we have a Congress and the administration which is completely anti-immigrant. So this is a painful process to get green card from mm -hmm. H1. We would mm -hmm. like to know how is the process of getting H1? How long it takes? You're asking me back 22 years ago or, or both comparison? Both comparison. <laughs> 22 years ago, the way the H-1B was filed uh, was, um, it was the filing fees was $85 for filing a H-1B 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was no lottery system in those days. And you file a H-1B application, you get the approval, you come into this country. It was very easy. Back in those days, we used to think it was hard uh, because we were looking into the previous 10 years, now now at this point of time, for a person to get a H-1B, it takes minimum of six months and a maximum of 18 months to get a H-1B. Once the application is being filed. Once, the, once you <coughs> decide to get an employee, mm -hmm. you have to make an application. You cannot file an application if the person is not already on H-1B until April 1st. Correct. And then there's you a You cannot file an application on March 31st, and you cannot file an application mm -hmm. on April 10th. You have to file only in that one particular yeah. week, the application. Mm -hmm. And true. that, the start date is October 1st. Mm -hmm. So it takes about six months to get it. Yes. And if by any chance you decide to hire a person on April 10th or April 15th. You'll have to wait another whole 18 months. months. Because until mm -hmm. April is one year and yeah. six months, 18 months. And that too, out of every four applications, mm -hmm. only one gets selected in the lottery. 
but if it's a master uh, quota then your chance of getting is one out of one out of every two okay so how many um, visas are granted in lottery system and uh, what uh, is the mas master quota in the h1b process at this point of time 65000 h1bs are granted okay the lottery normally you get about uh, uh, almost like about 200000 applications for 65000 and plus you have this master's quota which if a person has a master's degree in United mm -hmm. States from an accredited school mm -hmm. and it's a non-profit organization, then you will be eligible under the master's quota. There are 20,000 master's quota H-1B visas. Last okay. year, uh, it was about every two applications, only one application got selected. That's it? That's it. So it's up to them to select just one out of no, that huge number? No, out of every two applications, one got selected oh, in the lottery. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, you know so any uh, plans of this number getting increased decreased getting impacted under um, uh, definitely there is no uh, plan at this point of time to increase the numbers with this new Good. administration a like uh, lot more restrictions are about to come on this one uh, as we have seen uh, trump is an anti you know he's going on anti-immigration policies particularly on, on, on illegal people but also on legal immigration it's going to be impacted uh, so okay. we have to see how it works out. So how would this uh, overall impact the extension program that we have in place? Uh, the H-1B extension. Mm -hmm. Normally H-1B is given for three years. Sometimes they only get for one year depending mm -hmm. on the job conditions. You have to file an application every time when your H-1B is getting over. You, you file an application. Every time you file an application, you have to show that the position requires bachelor's degree as a minimum requirement. You have a proper job. You're getting paid. You are in legal status. You have the W-2 forms, uh, which you're getting paid the normal wage. And then you file an application with immigration. You get it extended up to three years. But they might shorten it up to one year depending on the job. Though. That's the extension process that's there. Now, the good part in the extension process is they don't come under the lottery system that we were discussing. Okay, but they can choose to either provide extension for one year. Yeah, it's one year, two years or three years. It depends on the job conditions and that's very frustrating to a lot of people is that every one year they have to go and extend the H-1B and then they have to do the premium processing. Yeah, I was explaining before the filing fees back in old days was $85. Now the filing fees in some of the H-1B cases $7,500 for a H-1B filing fees. Mm -hmm. So every and in the extension also the filing fees goes up to about four thousand to five thousand dollars for the extension. So every time you go to the immigration, you're paying all this money to the government. Right. Sometimes uh, the company who's hiring you might share the cost. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. But yes, this is whatever six months to eighteen months of filing. But finding an employer itself is a challenge right. once you are a student over here right. and you have done your master's course and mm -hmm. uh, even uh, the charges were th uh, for all those are pretty hefty mm -hmm. unless you have your scholarships going on. Right. So uh, would you like to talk about the OPT time that they have and how stressful is that and uh, on the students to yeah, get it's, it's, it's even very stressful. apply? Yeah, it's very stressful for them and at the same time some of these students because of the stress that they have to get into the lottery system they are trying into finding multiple different employers to file a H-1B. And that's one thing is a big problem when you uh, file with multiple employers. You don't have a job and you're filing with multiple different employers. That is completely illegal. And uh, a lot of employers get into trouble. A lot of employees get into trouble. Even if the H-1B is approved right now, they might come back and they might revoke the H-1B at a later date. I would not suggest that they do that. Uh, no. They should it's only file one job where they are working at, and with that H-1B, don't try to circumvent the don't try to circumvent the lottery process. You will be in trouble. And if you are paying money to any employer whom you are not working uh, to file a H-1B, you need to understand one thing: if the guy is telling you that he is doing a fraud with immigration. He mm. might as well do fraud with you too. That's so don't trust that guy point. doing it. Uh, don't don't pay any money to get the H-1B because that's mm. illegal. So true. But yes, yeah, sometimes uh, people are so impatient to try to find a job. They is, don't know yeah. which company's lawyer is really trying hard enough for mm. them to be, get settled in America right. and uh, all that. And that stress can sometimes mm. make 
them do uh, such stuff. But uh, as you said, uh, double filing should uh, just be not avoided. be done, completely avoided. But uh, uh, but also depends upon the assurance given by the company. And uh, so what should be done? So let's say they apply via one company. Let's say it doesn't work out for some reason or the other. Then the they should next year try with some other company or maybe down the line I they mean, might have the to get the... If the lottery is not picked up and there's nothing your employer can do it because he filed an application, the lottery is not picked up, there's nothing wrong with the employer. I mean, you just have to continue working for him if your employment authorization permits. If not, you have to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So how does the transfer, H-1B transfer... Uh, From one company to another mm -hmm. company. How does that work and how would that, would that be impacted and, um, yeah, in uh, current uh, situation? As you know, uh, uh, that uh, there is a recent regulation that came out that mm -hmm. if the I-140 is approved in, mm -hmm. the, in the immigration process, as we were discussing before, mm -hmm. if a person transfers from company A to company B, uh, they will be allowed to use the I-140 that was approved for the previous company mm -hmm. to extend and, and continue on that. So transfer process from one company to another company is very similar to getting a new H-1B, except that they are not subject to the lottery. Mm -hmm. But the new regulations that came out uh, in, uh, in, in December allows them to port the date from the previous company to this one. So they, they can still use their filing date. That's originally. right. That mm -hmm. is right. That's a good thing that Obama administration do right before he's going. Mm -hmm. It came on January 17th, actually. Okay. So uh, you are allowed to port the date from one company to another company. And if by any chance you fall out of status for about 60 days, they allow you grace period to be to be not having a job, not having a company for 60 days to stay in this country. So those are two That's good things. That's pretty really important thing right, that he did that before he was <laughs> January 17th this year. Again, January 20th <laughs> is Obama administration is out. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely crucial information that you just shared. Thank you so much. Uh, friends, uh, we shall continue talking uh, to Mr. Rahul Reddy after a short break. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome back to Desi Plaza with your host Kushpur Rawley. We are in talks with Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firms. So Mr. Reddy, uh, as we all know that America has been melting pot of all immigrants. It mm -hmm. has been actually constructed to a quite a large extent by immigrant population. That's right. So how do you think uh, this can continue or how uh, with the Trump administration, how would it all work out? How do you foresee the situation? Uh, we have a president who is kind of unorthodox. He is not technically a politician. He comes from a very unorthodox, uh, so it's hard to predict what Trump administration would do because he's not a traditional politician that came to power. Um, about 40% of the Fortune 500 companies in the United States are formed by the immigrants. Uh, now we have this administration that wants to ban all, you know, most of the immigration so definitely it's going to take a setback. And if you look into the Middle Eastern countries where they allow the immigrants to come, but they don't allow them to get the citizenship, they don't allow to get the green card, it becomes very, uh, our innovation is going to die. I mean, some of the companies that I would list as uh, Apple uh, is a company formed by Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs' biological father's name is Abdul, and he is a Syrian refugee the exact guy that what Trump just banned yesterday, Syrian refugee, he banned him. Mm -hmm. So we probably so won't we get Steve Jobs kind of people bring. anymore. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, and, and then Albert Einstein was a refugee from Nazi Germany. He came as a refugee into this country. So we will not have those people, I don't know. I mean, it's going to have a hard time uh, I am hoping that we will be able to convince the administration to do otherwise on these kind of things. Wow, you never know what uh, incoming people bring with them. Mm -hmm. So with all these bans uh, in place, we might just be cutting off the creativity and uh, from the country as well, you never know. Right. So that mm -hmm. really comes with its own risk. Right. Uh, how do you foresee the H4 EAD status? Like, w would it be banned? Would it still be the same? H1, um, I don't think so. It will be banned at this point of time. They are going to, they seems to be putting more restrictions on H1B. As we have already seen on Friday's executive order, they stopped 
uh, allowing people to get the automatic revalidation stamping uh, where you put the visa stamping in, in, uh, in the Dropbox. Now, um, they are also proposing some more restrictions on the H-1B. We are also noticing that in the executive order, they might put a restrictions on something called advanced parole that a lot of people who are in the green card state, uh, they, they file the green card status, they use that to travel to India and they are indicating that they will put a restriction on it. We don't know if more restrictions are going to come on the advance parole but we are sure that this administration is going to put more restrictions okay so how would this uh, uh, trump administration impact the stem extension program it was increased uh, from 17 to 24 months that's right so how do you anticipate it being the same or no i want to also touch another <laughs> subject on when we are doing the stem extension as we already know that the accredited agency called ACICS is no longer any accredited agency. That means that about 500 universities in uh, in United States uh, where students are on F1 visa have graduated or are in the process of graduating. Those universities degrees are no longer considered to be a recognized universities. That means that they will get the 12 months extension, but they will not be eligible for the 24 months extension. This has nothing to do with Trump though, but I just oh. want to point out that, that those people who graduate from these universities will not be allowed to use the 24 months. Right, so all now, of a sudden their plan changes, like it that's right. cuts short to half right, the time that, that they have yeah, to find a job. That happened in December 16th of 2017, uh, 2016, just before mm -hmm. uh, December, uh, in the month of December, in mm -hmm. the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. um, in, the, in the administration of the Trump, which is only one week old, uh, we haven't seen anything addressed on the STEM in the one week. However, Jeff Sessions, who is going to be the nominee, or expected to be the nominee, uh, expected to be the person for the Attorney General um, uh, on January 31st, is voting either there. If his opinion is to ban the STEM extension. That means that if he becomes an Attorney General, which seems to be 99% sure that he's going to become an Attorney General, he will advocate taking the STEM extension, which allows the people to work for 24 months on top of the 12 months he's advocating that STEM extension to be taken out. So it will go back to its original That's span right. of a year. That's right. O original back, this was in somewhere in 2007 or 2006. It was only one year and they extended it by 17 months. Now, now it's 24 months. Now it was going to go back. And but with the lottery system, people are going to have a lot of trouble um, getting the work we sell up. Right. But uh, under Trump, as um, he rightfully kind of proposes uh, to promote uh, the people of American origin and people from Ameri America itself to first have a job. Mm -hmm. And then these students are trying to get H1 and mm -hmm. then their time is shortened. It's kind of two edged sword that they might have to face and they might have to work really hard to find Right. what they get and yeah the slogan of america first is definitely a slogan that should have been there uh, before too and it was there actually mm -hmm. it was not told um a lot of people are under the presumption that the h1b visa is given a uh, preference to the foreigners no it is does not give to foreigners it is no way if a u.s citizen is applying for the job no employer will pick a h1b guy mm -hmm. or a person who is of foreign origin to do mm -hmm. why the number one question is, mm -hmm. there is a minimum wage that needs to be paid for a H-1B. That's not there. The minimum wage for the U.S. citizen is about $8 or somewhere around mm -hmm. that figure in most mm -hmm. of the states. The minimum wage for the H-1B is approximately around $35 per hour or $40 per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they hire a H-1B, they have to pay that high salaries mm -hmm. and the cost involved in it. Um, the, as I was mentioning, it, it's going to cost approximately around seven thousand dollars just as a filing fees plus the lawyer's fees, and the documentation cost. It's going to cost. And nobody wants to do that work if they find if they find a U.S. worker. That's true. Um, also, employer has to promise that he's not detrimentally affecting any U.S. workers. He's mm -hmm. signing a document uh, 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 saying that it's not. So America First is already a, there in the h right, There's a whole process that do have to uh, put out the job application locally before they can uh, 
actually right. get They need to post a notice of the LCA mm -hmm. and a lot of the employers are subject to the recruitment process. They have to put an advertisement in the newspapers, mm -hmm. which which uh, which nobody does in the newspapers. Who is you know who's reading newspapers? It's all uh, it's all digital. But the process media right is now. in place to process enforce is, America right, First right, already. You actually, put, you have to put the advertisements in two mm -hmm. newspapers. You have to post it on the website. You have to post it on mm -hmm. professional website. You have to mm -hmm. also post it in the in the state workforce commission. Mm -hmm. And then you need to document all those things. The employers do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot more than what normally they. If you hire a U.S. citizen, I just now, our law firm doesn't hire H-1Bs. We just post into the monster. We get the resumes, and then we hire. You know, but these IT companies, they have to do a lot of different things than posting on monster. And they get these resumes. If they hire, they hire it. I mean, if they mm -hmm. find an eligible candidate, they hire it. If not, they right. will go to the this lengthy process of the H-1B. They will right. go to that. So under this administration, uh, it seems the minimum requirement uh, is increased to 100K. That's uh, that's a presumption a lot of people are having about mm -hmm. the 100K. I looked into the legislation mm -hmm. very closely. It's not passed. Okay. It's just been referred to the uh, the Judiciary Committee in the House. And I don't think so that will have any impact on it. What it said is that if a company is paying less than $100,000 as a mm -hmm. salary, they have to first try to hire a U.S. worker. That's mm -hmm. already there. Mm -hmm. They're already doing it. Right. They just have to document that. Uh, whatever they are doing, they just have to document they're trying to hire a U.S. worker, which they are already doing. They just need to put the documentation. So that right. 100000 will not have much impact on the companies or the individuals. But the employer might think again because they might have to pay a little higher now to get in. They don't have to pay 100000 according to the law, what they're okay. proposing. All they're telling is that if you are paying un under 100000 you have to comply with the additional requirements of the recruitment. Oh, okay. It's yeah, not it's that they're banning it. It's, it's not, just it's that not the minimum wage that they are. Okay. So it's it's not going to be that harmful for any of these people. Uh, interesting. Uh, what other uh, uh, impacts do you see in general on Indian population who are trying to apply now or who have already, let's say, applied their uh, H-1 or green cards or citizenships uh, uh, would uh, citizenship impact. is taking uh, nowadays. Citizenship is taking about nine to ten months. It used to take only four months. There are more restrictions coming even to apply for citizenship right now. There are more restrictions coming. The length of getting the citizenship is also is going to go up. Previously, about a year ago or two years ago, it was only four months. It is. It's already grown to nine months because of some issues with uh, with with the technology that uh, the administration was using. This new uh, administration is definitely going to extend that nine months process to a longer period of time for getting mm -hmm. citizenship. That's one point. And now coming to the H-1B and this 100,000, American first, definitely American first should be there. But the kind of uh, rhetoric uh, that this administration is presenting is that something that the foreigners are evil people. Uh, and they are promoting that kind of culture among the people that foreigners are evil. Uh, they are all comparing that everybody is a terrorist because one guy did something bad and everybody is a terrorist. Uh, that's the presumption that they are promoting and that culture is not good for United States growth. It's not good for Indians. It's not good. We won't get any innovative companies when you're focusing, the administration is focusing on things that are not important. Uh, also, in the H-1B, I think some more restrictions are going to come. Um, Jeff Sessions uh, thinks that H-1B should be restricted very much. According to his opinion, there are 400,000 IT workers in the United States on visas like H-1B, L-1, L-2, H-4, EAD. He thinks that if you take all of them out uh, of the working force where they are not allowed to, he thinks that the U.S. workers will get the jobs. But what he does not understand is that if a lot of companies are already going outside the country because there is no talent force here mm -hmm. on the technology field, you mm -hmm. see that every day Google is hiring 10,000 in India uh, and uh, Apple is hiring, um, Microsoft is hiring because the talent. Mm -hmm. If they restrict these things, the companies are going to go outside. Uh, outside. That's the main the, the world is now global and there is nothing here and there and putting more restrictions is not good for our country. 
Actually, so true. Um, outsize, uh, outsourcing might just increase because ultimately they're all looking, uh, businesses are looking to make more profits at less cost. Mm -hmm. So technically fighting this problem is not easy, but mm -hmm. at the same time he's trying to promote uh, people who are already here, right. which is a good intent. But uh, it seems like in general, we just have to be a little more careful and wary That's of right. the rules that are in place currently. Uh, what would you suggest uh, to the people who are trying to put in applications for H1s? Because it might be scrutinized a little more and uh, sometimes yeah. they are kind of... Be careful for the, for the in-house projects, the so-called in-house projects where they're, if the job does not exist, don't file an H1B application. Um, never do that. You mm -hmm. should not do that. Fake filing and all. Uh, yeah, you know, we have noticed that that uh, fake resumes have been going on very much, um, especially when the people are traveling back from India to here, um, uh, especially in some of the airports that are checking their resumes. Uh, sometimes what happens is that it's not that the individuals are informing uh, faking the things, for example, if an individual is working with Verizon as an end client mm -hmm. and the employer company is ABC Inc., in the Facebook, which company they put it? They don't put the consulting company name. They want to put the Verizon out there, mm -hmm. which is an end client. But when that's there in the LinkedIn, that's there in the Facebook, and it's there everywhere. It's there in your mm -hmm. resume. It's there everywhere. So when you are coming into this country, they are looking into, okay, you're working for Verizon. How come you don't have a H-1B with a Verizon name or whatever the company name it might be? And that's the confusion. Uh, there's a confusion among our people and the USCIS and the CBP uh, of which is your, who is your employer? Is it the end client? Is it the employer? Mm -hmm. that, they so do look up on all the social they, medias oh too. Yes, uh, I don't know if you've <laughs> Check been you out. Uh, listening to what Snowden has been mm -hmm. telling all along was that mm -hmm. even when your cell phone is powered off, mm -hmm. the camera is still on <laughs> and that is going to the administration. They have huge buildings in Washington, D.C. and Virginia area that analyze all these things. The, uh, there are algorithms written, what to catch, what not to catch. Wow. All this information is provided to the Customs and Border Protection right. Unit when and if necessary. That's true. Obviously. And even though you delete something, it's not truly deleted. There's a whole Nothing. other process to delete which we might not even know. It, it's there on hard disk somewhere You're on that chip. You're just deleting on your computer. It's just deleted for you, not for them. Not for them. Yes. <laughs> so everything we, is monitored, what you speak, what you do in the social media. Uh, nowadays, there is no privacy existing. I mean, it's not there. Everything is, uh, unless uh, you are uh, like Ted Kaczynski, where you live in a jungle, where no cell phones are there, no TV, no electricity. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's privacy but that's the there. hard truth and fact of the times that we live in. We want to be connected. We want all these facilities, but it comes with its own cost and it comes right. with the risk. That's, that's but the at the same I, time, I just want people to be a little bit careful what they are putting in. I'm not telling that don't use Facebook, don't mm -hmm. use LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Try to see if you are complying with all mm -hmm. the things. What the outside people will look into you yeah, and will analyze when that. Trump as government is watching you. <laughs> every government is watching you. The Indian government is watching you. Your government mm -hmm. is uh, U.S. government. Yes. So it, you just have to be careful what you put in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not telling not to put a picture of you, right. or that's fine. Mm -hmm. But which employer you're putting in, yeah. all those details. Try to be very careful what you're putting in there. Mm -hmm. Don't try to put anything. You know, sometimes we boast people. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. I go to the bar, you know, I might say something to the girl who's sitting next to me. You know, that doesn't mean that that's the truth. You know, don't put that in. That's in, true. In, in, Everybody in, has their, yeah. it's their own wall and watch it right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, what are the other process changes in general that we can expect, that a common person can expect? Like, uh, is N-400 form, it seems, uh, it has changed. Right. Do you expect any other changes? On February 3rd, all the forms, most of the forms that the Indians use are changing for sure. But the N-400 form, if you file under the older version of it, it is not, they are not going to accept that anymore. It's only the newer versions of the forms that will be accepted. Uh, most of the other forms they are allowing, even though the forms were changed in December, they are allowing until February uh, of 2017. After that, they are not going to accept any old forms. My advice is use only the new forms. How do you find what the form, how do you find, you just go to the USCIS website and you will see, mm -hmm. and you will see the form date on there. That's very mm -hmm. important for you mm -hmm. to, 
and that's the best thing to file. And from February onwards, all forms have to be new. And for the mm -hmm. citizenship application, if you file on the old form, they are rejecting right now. Sounds good. Well, with all, all these changes which we have recently heard, uh, we are. Tr thank you so much for providing all that detailed information on all that um, uh, recent topics, hot topics. And uh, but still, uh, I don't know uh, how uh, well we hope a Trump administration manages all these issues that they are trying to uh, bring forth. The changes they are trying to bring forth, the uh, management needs to happen along with it um, e equally well. So. Uh, Anything that you want to suggest uh, in general, our audience of Desi Plaza, uh, uh, from your side as keep watching immigration Desi lawyer? Plaza, <laughs> uh, keep watching Desi Plaza. They do bring a lot of immigration issues. And uh, be careful on what you're doing. Just watch uh, yourself and then follow the directions of the lawyer and the illegal norms that are provided in this country. Uh, that's all we can hope. And we should also try to advocate more. Um, represent ourselves in front of the Congress to uh, lobby the things and explain them we are not evil and we work harder and we are the persons who pay the taxes and we should be benefited through the immigration programs rather than harmed. So well said and uh, so truthfully said. We, in these changing times, we just got to be a little more aware and pay more attention to what we are trying to do and the legality behind it stays together and uh, if, we if we need to speak up, do speak up and uh, well Desi Plaza is here for, for you. Keep listening to uh, Desi Plaza, keep watching it and uh, keep smiling. Thank, Thank you, you so much Mr. Rahul Reddy for uh, coming here and giving us your special precious time. And uh, thank you so much to thank you. everybody. Thank you, thank you Gushbu.